everybody and welcome back to another weekly vlog. I just finished doing my makeover midweek video so if you didn't see that yet go watch that after this because it's fun and it explains why I have my extensions back in and why I look like this and uh, also have no eyebrows. Well I have eyebrows they're just amazing! Oh, I love them so much. I love these bleach brows so much. Thank you so much, Erin, for suggesting. I've already thanked her a million times in that video, but thank you so much for suggesting I do this because this has saved me from the brow hell that I've been in. <laughs> Today, I'm actually going to get out of the house. I have some errands to run. I would like to go to the craft store. We're going to the craft store again because I need to find the beads to match the vintage sweaters. I feel like an idiot because I wish I had done this before the weather got really warm. I'm sure it'll switch back to being cool again. Maybe. It's still spring. It's not summer for another month, I think. Uh, so, you know, it just would have been nice to have these very hot vintage sweaters ready in time for me to actually wear them, but we're going to take care of those this week. So that is going to be the big thing this week. Let me go get them. So we are finally going to be upcycling the vintage sweaters that I got in Portland. I cannot let them sit here another day. Now what we're going to need to do, I can't believe I got this for five bucks. Five bucks! Vintage. Like a 1950s, amazing, beautiful, silk-lined vintage sweater. All because it has some things that it needs love, you know, needs some love. So here's what we've got going on. This one has some thread hanging around. It has some holes. Can you see the holes? See those big holes right there? So it has that going on. It has a hole here and they need washed too. So that was the other thing was looking up ways to properly wash. This looks like a bite mark. Jesus. <laughs> what is that? Um, but I want to try to find beading that matches. So this one's actually going to come with me. I'm, I'm going to try to match the beads. So I'm going to go to the craft store and try to find something that I think I could maybe do some repairs. If not, if I don't find anything, I'm just going to try to make it make sense. So this one's kind of a hot mess and it's going to be a lot more work than this one. This one actually still has most of the beading intact still looks fab but look we have some stains so we need to try to get rid of these stains as well and i looked up a few different ways to repair stains on wool sweaters because these are 100 percent lamb's wool sweaters you can see the labeling right here this one was 11 so it was a little bit more because it's in better condition needs fixed up but overall i i i love that you know most if anything all of the yeah all of the beading is intact. So that is going to be the task today is just showing you how I'm going to repair and make these amazing old sweaters new and lovely again. <laughs> not that they're not lovely now, but I love making things that are old. Give them the love they deserve. I love old stuff. I just love old stuff. I love old people. I love old houses. I love old clothes. I love old. <laughs> Probably just because I am so young. All right, well, I'm gonna go make a smoothie. My stomach is growling, so let's get this vlog started. I'm excited to do this with you guys. I couldn't have even done better than this. Joanne Fabrics is in the same parking lot as World Market. Dang it. <laughs> Busted. I, it's, I don't care. There's days where I really don't care, and then there's days where it really embarrasses me, and... I'm not sure why. I'm not, I'm not sure what the difference is of the days, but I'll never see this person again. And if I did, if I caught somebody doing vlogs in their car, I would be like, you know, hey friend. <laughs> um, but that would be rare. Anyway.
these are what I was talking about. It's perfect. So now I can just go get fruit in bulk and bring my own bag. And if I forget a bag, I can use paper, but I'm just trying not to use plastic as much. And then I can rinse them in here. It's, it's perfect. Uh, so I got two of them. So I have one for tomatoes and one, then one for my smoothie fruit that I tend to always have. And I'm having a blast. This is great. The lighting in here is amazing. Just love. And these have already been rinsed, but now I don't need this ugly plastic anymore. Look at how adorable. I have changed into dog walking attire. It's a beautiful day. I'm gonna get these pups out of the house. And it's short season. Rose garden check, season check. Mine are actually coming in. These ones still don't look like they are yet. Hello, welcome to the next day. I am going to be doing an upcycling today, so we are finally going to get to these dang sweaters. Do a little unboxing, shall we? So this sweater is the one that's gonna get some beading repaired on it. I don't think it'll take me too, too long, but it's something that I think would be perfect to do while sitting in front of the TV. I have just been catching up on the season seven of Outlander. And so I think that will be perfect. I've got like a couple episodes left. So sitting down in front of the TV while I watch Outlander is going to be like <laughs> ideal. But here's, here's what I was thinking. So I have these little gold, see these little gold ones? And I couldn't find any of the really white crystally looking ones. But I think if I took, if I can just play around with a few of these beads. Now stay right where you are. And then these beads, uh, they're called seed beads. They're just really small. And then here's the gold, which on the sweater, you can see has a lot of these giant or bigger gold balls. They're not exactly the same color, but if I sprinkle these in throughout the sweater, it will look intentional. And I think that will work just fine. So that is going to be part of today's upcycling project. I am going to fix all of the beading on this sweater. I also need to go around and repair a few holes on it. I'm thinking what I might do is just focus on one sweater at a time, but I want to wash them at the same time. So maybe, yeah, but this doesn't need any beading repair. This just has stains and holes that it needs repaired in it. And it's in the better shape of the two. All right, here is today's outfit. I have on a free people bra, bra top. Like it's one of those built-in bras, even though the cups filleth over they spilleth or they are they filleth or they spilleth they spilleth <laughs> the cups are full uh but it's still cozy and i just wanted to wear something comfortable today uh, this skirt actually has been in my thrift store for sale for a while i don't think it's listed right now on the website but i yanked it out of the pile i tend to do that a lot i shop from my own thrift store quite a bit and um, it's a little vintage skirt by Piquettes. It's so cute. It's like this like periwinkle blue color and it's pleated. It's really thick. It's kind of like a polyester feeling material, but I love it. And I just felt like wearing it today. So we're gonna rock the skirt. Maybe I'll eventually list it in the store for sale and someone can buy it. But for now, I'm going to enjoy it. So what I've done is this actually has an opening, thank goodness, in the sleeve so that I can go underneath and pull the silk lining back. And I'm working on this hole here. I watched some videos on darning and I know that darning is a great way to patch up a hole, but I watched another gal who did it just by trying to repair the rip, cause this is obviously just ripped apart. I don't think, I think it's different if it's a moth hole that ate the actual hole through it. Cause then if that's the case, that entire section is missing because it was, probably swallowed by the moth. But if it's a rip, then it's just a break in the seams and you can kind of just go back into the seam, find the little holes where you can and just try to mend them back together. So I'm just basically trying to close the hole in the most unnoticeable way. You know, like you won't even, you won't even see it. Hopefully. It'll be minimal, at least.
still working on my sweater. I finished Outlander until the next season. So I'm having to look for a new show. And in the meantime, I made my carrot cake. My carrot... <laughs> He's in the basement. I made carrot cupcakes. And they look so good. I got this cute little cupcake tester. And then I just, for the first time ever in my life, piped... <laughs> piped frosting. I've never done that thing has all sorts of cool ideas. Look at these floral ones. I definitely want to learn, but I didn't have a whole lot of icing to play with, so I didn't want to get too creative with it. So I just did little florets and then sprinkled cinnamon. But this is a lot of carrot, so it's, in my opinion, healthy because <laughs> it's essentially tons of carrots with like a cream cheese frosting it's just not it's not loaded with sugar it also had a yogurt base they're so good so i'll um put the recipe again in the description for you guys i anytime i do something and i'm like it's amazing i always link the recipe to where i found it in the description box but we're gonna order pizza and i'm gonna finish my sweater so that's the rest of the evening and i'll see you guys probably tomorrow Good morning. I washed the hair, <laughs> as you can see. It has gotten so much fuller. That's usually what happens after extensions. They get super, like, fluffy. Here's the thing. Okay, so here's what we're doing. The sweaters are on pause until the wool wash gets here. I looked on a website about cleaning vintage wool and just wool in general, how to repair stains. And this one particular, it's just like a complete, it's a whole website about wool. And it was saying how, think about how this is like a porous fiber because it's hair. Uh, so if you were to wash it the way that you do anything else that's porous with hair in the laundry with soap, it's probably going to change the texture or change how the sweater looks. It could, there's a chance that I can end up really ruining these sweaters. Because they're from the 50s, I've confirmed that by Googling the sweater, uh, that the name of the sweater that does have a label. You can find those sweaters on Etsy right now, similar to style to this one that I have, for $150. And I got that sweater for $11. I felt like the best way to commemorate and end this video would be finding a really cute vintage looking dress that the sweaters would look good over and there is a thrift store right up by the farmer's market that has a, se a section in the back that's all vintage clothing so I'm thinking of just peeking at that and seeing what they have I could use something that I might already have I don't think I have any vintage that's short sleeved that a sweater would look good over. I'm picturing like one of those like housewife looking dresses that are kind of, you know, cap sleeve and then have a a frame, a frame um skirt that goes out, something that just looks very housewife, like 50s housewife. I have this little gingham skirt on. I'm going to wear my new sandals that I thrifted at the um on the real world, but I do have my skirt hike just on the tie here. This shirt, you guys, long ages ago in another life of mine, I was a bar manager and the bar's owner, his wife, I loved her. Like we, she would come in and sit and chat with me and she felt like family. Everyone felt like family there. It's where I met a lot of my really dear friends who I still keep in touch with. She thought that this looked like a shirt that I would love. We actually do still follow each other on Instagram, so I wanna take a photo of it and tag her and be like, look what I still have. Because I've had this shirt, oh God, how long has it been? Like for like 15 years or something like that. And then she had this shirt back when she was a kid and like would go to concerts and stuff. She said this was like her favorite concert shirt. So yeah, I'm loving this outfit. I think it's really cute. The moment I put in this hair, the weather turns to 80 something degrees, but look at how it goes down to my butt. That's like the length I was, I wanted. I wanted it to be so long that it goes down past my hips. Like that's what I wanted. When they do this, my heart melts. <laughs> you guys are so cute and you're poofed together. We should just get two poofs.
Okay, I definitely am having a still got it day because I had two men run to get the door for me. And I think it's the hair. I'm telling you it's my superpower. Mission accomplished. I found two things while thrifting. One that I think will go with this project and the other just because it was really beautiful and I had to have it. So I got two dresses. It's 95 degrees inside of my car right now because it's so freaking hot. Yeah, the whole idea of doing a wool sweater reel right now feels very stupid. It was cold still when I planned it. <laughs> Okay, so I am back from the thrift store and I have on one of the dresses and I just did the real closer, like I ended the real. And so I have both sweaters on for that reel and I've decided to make it a part two where I'm gonna show how to properly cleanse a wool sweater. And I do say that this sweater is my favorite one. Even though the other one has more intricate beading on it, the beading on this one is still in fabulous shape and it still has the tag. It's still, look at these little details around. Oh, it's just so beautiful. Isn't this glorious? I love it so much. It fits me like a freaking glove. I wish it had pockets. A little hard to get on and off because the zipper goes all the way up. So I definitely need help like getting in and out of it, but I managed it this time. My favorite part is these sleeves. Look at these puffy sleeves. It's like an army green dress and I just love it. I think it's so cute. I'll uh, take it off and show you the label and then I'm gonna put on the other dress that I got as well. It's called Shabby Apple. Shabby Apple. Two words I love. <laughs> and it still has the tag. Oh, it's made by women who are starting a small business. Um, but let me show you this amazing dress that I have on. It's glorious. And this is the perfect dress for the weather that is outside, which is hot. Oh, you had me at applique florals and a boho tie with a boho bat wing shaped top. You had me. <laughs> Again, though, no pockets. Second dress I got today with no pockets. Not stoked on that. But we do have some tassels. This is a size small, but it fits me really well. Um, and it's from the World Market, which I did go in earlier this week, as you know. And I did see they had similar dresses to this in the clothing section. So who knew that World Market has clothes, but I had to have this. So I got this at the thrift store, Megan Mo. I thought that was gonna be their business label, but it's not, it just says thank you for supporting small business. But yes, that is a local uh, small business thrift store, but like high end. And so yeah, anyway, that's where I got this one. So the other one I got from the Cancer American Cancer Society thrift store, which my place isn't always open. So seeing that it was open, I had to go in and check it out. And I'm so glad I did because they have really good pricing. It's definitely thrift store pricing instead of um, marked up. You know what I mean? But anyway, I'm going to put all this stuff away, make myself a sandwich, wait for my wool, my wool cleaner to get here. <laughs> it's taking forever. Good morning. You look what finally came late last night. <laughs> it came at like 8, 9 p.m., something like that. The first thing we're going to do is attempt to get that stain out. So I'm going to do some baking soda with some lukewarm water, make a little bit of a paste, and try to get those coffee stains out of the front. Fingers crossed. All right, now we got our out back gold wool wash and conditioner, original scent. Let's see what it smells like. Detergent, one teaspoon per gallon of water. So I'm gonna get that measured out and start the soaking. It says to soak them for 10 minutes. So I'm getting all of my information from Woolmark Company, which is a very old, like it's been around forever. I think even as far back as like the 1930s. And they are like the authority on wool making and wool, merino wool, all that. Their website has so much information on wool care. 1954. 19 
My husband's putting in new wiring for the whole house. We're getting it completely rewired. So that's what that sound is. Nope, I'm done. It's okay. I'm gonna voice over. <laughs> so we have a new outlet going in here, fresh rewiring, fresh rewiring here. That outlet is new. That wasn't there before, so that's already done. And he's abandoning all the old wiring and installing brand new wiring. <laughs> and our house <laughs> is full of tools and random stuff. So check it out. Here is the first one. So I think we've only got that one or two. This one right here was a little more stubborn and this one was a little more stubborn, but the rest came out. So that's great. Baking soda and water totally did the trick. Look at that. I'm very pleased with this overall project. We still have this guy in here drying off and when this is dry i'm just going to go around and see if i can fix any other little holes that i see because there's definitely a few that i missed um but all the major ones that i felt like were the biggest problem i was able to fix and then i need to secure some more beading throughout and then we'll be good to go and this one will be in pretty good condition i like how even the detail is down to this little spot here you can have that open or closed i just think that's just such a small detail to have on an old sweater but this one is just so beautiful like it's just so beautiful i'm gonna leave you hanging like i'm gonna leave these wool sweaters hanging for probably two to three days to fully dry and then i'm going to put them away in the back of my closet somewhere where they can just live out the rest of summer until autumn where i can pull them out and really get to enjoy the next um the next season that gets a little more on the chilly side so i'll really have something to look forward to I think that's going to be it for this video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way through and having a little fun with me on upcycling some vintage sweaters. My, I have a fan and a dishwasher going. Sorry for the background noise, but please do subscribe if you aren't a subscriber and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy vintage upcycles. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.